John White. I'm filling in for Curtis Smith, and with me today is Bill Peden. And Bill, I found out, is an accomplished rhododendron grower here in Las Cruces. Bill, welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. Thank you, John. Glad to be with you. Well, let's go. Let's go take a look at Thank the rhododendron. You. Well, here we are, John. This is really pretty comfortable and a beautiful greenhouse. Thank you. The, uh, there are several dynamics that have to be met in order to raise these plants. And if you change one, you have to change the other two. One is temperature, then moisture, and then light. Okay, now as far as plants, we're talking about a tropical rhododendron? Yes. Versus a rhododendron that we hear about growing in in the, the east or United in States. Canada or the northwest, yes, they grow out in the garden and can endure uh, both heat and cold. But these are a subtropical plant and they have to have about the same environment that we need for orchids. And so that's why I've chosen to put the two together. It gives us a novelty plus we have uh, more blooms at one time. Well, tell me about some of the things that you've had to do to alter the environment in order to get these rhododendrons to grow. Well, I heard a very good quote the other day, and that is, you can change everything but your own habits. <laughs> and that's what I've had to deal with first, is learning what my habits are and then adjusting the, the coarseness of the planting mix and my watering practices, my fertilizing practices, to meet the demands of this type of an environment. Now you've um, mentioned that you've uh, gone to reverse osmosis on the water in order to help with the water quality. Water <clears throat> is, is a real problem dealing uh, with these plants in a soilless culture. You got to remember both of them the orchid and the rhododendron would be happier growing in the top of a tree in a jungle. That's where they came from. And so they certainly are going to have to make some adaptations to grow in a greenhouse in a potting mix. And so we have to find a coarseness of the potting mix. Uh, we have to find a fertilizing regimen because most of these plants do not have much fertilizer in their natural state. Then we have to learn something about the light because it changes all the time. And then we have to deal with temperature. And when we adjust one, then that requires some fine tuning on the other two. I see you have a uh, climate controlled greenhouse here. Well, I, I wonder sometimes whether <laughs> I'd rather be a botanist or an engineer. <laughs> but I like, I like the mechanical aspects of growing things in a greenhouse. We have timers that control when water turns on and off. And we have uh, thermostats that determine when we open ventilators and turn on fans and change our temperatures. Uh, that's been the fun part of it. Uh, and that is another facet that makes greenhouse culture so interesting. What kind of temperature range are we trying to keep here? Uh, these plants seem to be most comfortable between maybe 55 as a low in the winter and 80 as a high in the summer. Okay. Um, the big trick is to maintain a humidity level of around 60 percent plus. If we don't keep it that high, the plants are reluctant to bloom and blooms wilt quickly. Um, and uh, they uh, are often stressed. But I find if I can keep the humidity up, uh, then I don't have to water as much, don't have to fertilize as much, and the plants stay uh, in more turgid state. I see we have uh, some misters and some uh different irrigation devices here to <laughs> water plus also keep that humidity up and then mm -hmm. all the rock here yes also helps to hold moisture and, and give off humidity so it looks like you're doing quite well well the thing I have to be really careful about is keeping enough air circulation because with all this humidity and these relatively high temperatures it's a perfect environment for fungus and algaes and bacteria to grow 
and about the only way we have of keeping it under control is to have good air movement in the greenhouse. Okay. Well, Bill, I'd like to thank you very much for giving us a tour of your greenhouse and your uh, rhododendrons and orchids here. I thank think you. you're doing a great job, and it's very interesting to see somebody uh, tackling a, <laughs> a more difficult uh, plant problem here. Rhododendron is very hard in the Well, I think, a lot, I think a lot of people would enjoy this type of a hobby, and uh, I would certainly encourage it. Okay. Well, Bill, thank you. Thank you.